everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. This is going to be uh, relatively short. And if you know me, you know what I mean. If not, you'll find out soon. But this is going to be relatively short, but it's a point that has to be made for multiple reasons. Uh, I have made it a commitment to not only conduct uh, scientific research together, empirical and pragmatic data on the ills of the black community, but I have spent countless hours producing programs and solutions and implementing those programs on a small scale to see promising results, but we need a more uh, robust response to our issues, meaning we need more people uh, in positions of influence and power, in positions of financial capacity and capabilities, in positions of influence to jump in and be a part of this movement. We talk about revolution, but revolution requires engagement. Uh, revolution doesn't seek approval or acceptance from the thing it's trying to revolt against. And so uh, I think we really need to visit this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share, share two passages from my book. I have been talking to you guys for quite some time about the different research projects we have going on, the different programs Black Man Lead, uh, our programs for domestic violence and intimate partner homicide, our uh, programs for mental health and mental uh, mental health depression, uh, suicide prevention, and so much in that area. And on and on and on, we have been going at this. I've been in this battle before my adulthood. Uh, I have been professionally engaged in producing research and writing uh, academic papers and scholarship uh, on it, writing books on it. I'm uh, about to release book 28 and 29 next year, um, along with a couple of other research papers and position papers on specific things plaguing our community. And yet we are stagnant. We're in last place in every socioeconomic category because we are unengaged. And the ones who have the most capacity to make a difference are simply satisfied that they're not doing as bad as the most of us. And that is a problem. Look, I'm going to read you something. This is towards the end. This is chapter 13 of my 19th book, Born in Captivity. Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. Uh, the first uh, Two small segments, and I'm going to talk to you about it real quick and then I'm done. But I think we've got to be more willing to engage the meat of the matter. We are too uh, committed to sensationalism. We want to be entertained. We want to make we want to uh, be made to dance and laugh. We want to escape the responsibility of taking action. And that's not how we're going to get the progress. And what we're doing is determining through our decisions and our inactivity and our lack of proactive engagement, we're determining the, 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 the type of life and world we're going to leave to our progeny, our offspring, our children's children's children are going to reap uh, what we've sown, good or bad. And right now I'm not really happy or satisfied with what we're leaving the subsequent generations. Okay, so the, uh, this first subcategory within this chapter, the chapter is chapter 13, The Psychology of Racism. Uh, and here it's, uh, this subcategory is indifference and the lack of urgency. It says, unfortunately, gradualism has become a drug that tranquilizes fervor and passion that should be associated with the urgency and intensity of the moment. Far too many blacks who can make an impact in war-torn communities across America are far too content with sitting by and hoping that things will self-correct. In places like Chicago and Wilmington, Delaware, gunplay and fratricide have become far too common. Communities in which elderly people have lived in their homes for decades are being forced to consider relocating. Several months ago, I was approached about the possibility of bringing my inner city program to Wilmington by a person who is extremely passionate about creating change there. Unfortunately, those who are able to make a difference are either completely overwhelmed by what is taking place, unaware of what needs to be done, or in some form of denial concerning the seriousness and urgency of the moment. Despite the natural proclivity of blacks to sit back and hope that things get better, problems do not self-correct themselves. 
Problem must, problems must be directly engaged with a high level of specificity and purpose while some headway is being made as far as becoming an instrument of change in Wilmington and other cities across America. As long as I and other brothers and sisters like myself remain an anomaly among our people, we are fighting an uphill battle. The second is in a subcategory called crisis, the current state of black America in one word. Uh, and the and the sub uh, topic to that is a paradigmatic shift. It's just one paragraph. It says, I have spent years researching and anatomizing the complex dynamic that underwrites our struggles. And while we have and while we find ourselves in a very bad situation, we are not yet doomed. In my recent book, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, I go into great detail to reveal the machinations that we are facing. And I also present the solutions for each. In all the research that it took to write this book with confidence, the one common denominator that was persistently present in every aspect of our struggle was our willful compliance and lack of participation in our own emancipation and empowerment. We fight vigorously to convince those who are in power to offer us some relief. We are quite astute and energetic in presenting our case to be accepted as part of the elite, but we have taken no action to establish any form of competitive positioning that would make others take us seriously. We, in, in a very succinct statement, are too lethargic. We're too inactive. We lack proactive engagement. We lack the, the urgency and the commitment to step out and take action. Um, like him, hate him, love him, whatever. Um, the brother has made some strong points over the years. Uh, there are some things that I don't agree with, but I love. To, I, I, I am one that much rather loves to find the common ground with my fellow brothers and sisters who are a part of this uh, highly complex um, compilation of people trying to make a difference. Uh, call, you know, at some point you, you called everything, and so, but you love him or hate him. Uh, Umar Johnson, Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, said something about 10 years ago that just stuck with me. Uh, and it says that uh, racism, white supremacy racism is absolutely nothing without black compliance. And I absolutely agree. Compliance is the will for participation in the very system that is leading to your demise. Compliance is doing what the system dictates instead of standing up and doing what is in your best interest. Compliance is sitting up and hoping and begging and participating and completely uh, doing what has never worked, expecting it to work. And meanwhile, constantly contributing to your demise by financing it through consumerism. These all are forms of compliance. In other words, the way that you overcome racism is by standing up and becoming self-sufficient. It is by addressing your own needs, addressing your own ills, solving your own problems. When you become a solving problem people, a, so a problem solving race, it is then that you will develop the respect of those around you because at that point you're standing on your own and you will be recognized as a force to be reckoned with. You will make your presence felt. It is not until we sit up and we take all of the research. See, I, I, I stood on the broad shoulders of some very powerful and unbelievably unbelievably brilliant minds, not Dr. Naeem Abba, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Dr. Neely Fuller Jr., Dr. Amos Wilson, doctor, uh, and, 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 and on and on. And I took their, Dr. Howard Stevenson, Dr. Jar DeGruy, I took their research and I went deeper, I went harder, I went to look and I wanted my whole thing, find the answer. What do we do from here? What do we take from here? And that's the thing. At some point, somebody has to come along and take what I've done and take it and do more with it. This is about building and coming up with solutions. The thing is, we can't keep having generation after generation of scholars, generation after generation of brilliant thinkers come across and lay down these unbelievable 
un, uh, unimaginable blueprints and then step on them and keep on going while complaining about what they are doing to us. The moment that we sit up and decide it is no longer acceptable to do this to us, we won't do it by announcing it in word. We'll do it by the actions we take, the things we invest in, the things that we stand on, the things that we build. That is how we do it. We're not going to do it sitting up pouring billions of dollars annually. Right now, from October to Christmas Eve, we're going to spend $535 billion into their community. We don't have $535 billion. So guess where a lot of that's coming from? That's coming from debt that we're creating in our own homes to go out and finance commercialism within our structure in a debt-based economy that needs us to actually spend more than we have in order to keep the dollar valid. And here we are doing it. It doesn't serve us anything but a good feeling for a moment. Look what I did for my family. Look what I did for my kids. Your kids need to see parents being responsible. Your kids need to be able to have an environment where they can actually go to school and learn in a way that benefits them, not the system. They need to be more than just trained to work for somebody. They need to be developed in their mind, their mentality, their self-image, their self-concept, their self-esteem, their self-confidence, so that they can go out and create solutions for themselves. So that when someone says, I'm not going to pay you that to work for me, I'll pay you this, say, that's all right, I'll work for myself and be able to go out and create the mechanisms through which they're going to carry that out. That's what we should be teaching. That's what we should be doing. But we're too busy trying to fit in. We're too busy asking to be a part of the party. We're too busy trying to be accepted. And we are not doing what we need to do to stand up and ensure that our children have a better footing in this world than what we were what we inherited that's on us that's our failure if we sit up and send our great grandkids out into a world that is doing exactly to them what they're doing to the kids out there now That's on us because we refuse to take the mantle. We refuse to stand up. We refuse to get out there and say, you know what? Not on my watch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm good at this. I'm good at that. I'm going to stand up in this. I'm going to. That's what we should be doing. And for heaven's sakes, the people who are out there on the battlefield, boots on the ground, doing the work, doing the research, doing the programming, doing all the things that are being done in the community that get little to no fanfare, but are literally the only hope our communities have. Start standing behind them, start supporting the work, start doing it because anything that actually works in our community will never be funded by uh, the white dollar or government dollars. If it's white dollars and government dollars, grants and all these other things come into the community is because they know the program doesn't work. They've done the research. They understand it. Are they going to be so heavily involved that they're going to make sure they unlinch pin it so it doesn't work? I've watched this over and over again. You can't tell me you pour millions and millions of dollars into something and it doesn't work. And they'll come back and say, well, we did this and we did this. And this is just what happened. And the whole underlying message will be, that's just how they are. No, you knew certain things and certain elements. There are certain things. You can put a whole entire car together. You can fill it up with gasoline, have the battery charged and everything else. If the spark plugs are not connected, the car will not start. If you the spark plugs are connected and you disconnect the cable, battery cable, the car will not start. <laughs> Looks like a perfectly good car. You look at it. It's everything's there. You check the gas tank. The gas is full, but it won't start. They know what they're doing. And we, the only way that we can ensure that the programs that are going to benefit our kids, I'm going to tell you what always happens. You get brilliant minds come up with brilliant ideas that sit up and actually work. And what ends up happening is for those people who are passionate about the work they do to get any work done, they have to take on all the other children that don't look like them to involve them because the only way they get funding. And I don't have a problem working with other kids, but my kids are suffering more than any other kids. Black kids are in last place. So I want to help them catch up. I can never help them catch up if I'm giving the same help to the kids that they're trying to catch up to. Plus, those kids have help. Those kids have other places they can go. Our children do not. And yet, here we are. 
it totally blows my mind that it takes this much. They throw a couple of uh, commercials up, get Walmart looting the place with your dollars. You online looting the place with your dollars. Jordan sell out before they even hit online. They don't even bring them in the store anymore. They just sell them online. Before they drop, they're already pre-ordered. 60% of those are parents buying them for kids that are reading, that are in the 12th grade reading on an 8th grade level. Meaning that they're not going to have the capacity to go out in the world and actually compete. Which means that in order to have the very things that you've gotten them used to having, they're either going to continue to live off you or they're going to become criminal minded to make enough money to be able to buy them. And that means they're going to either end up dead or incarcerated. You don't see the cycle. I'm watching it every day. I've studied it for darn gone 30 years. I'm trying to tell you, we have to take control of the future of our children by providing the proper environment, the proper tools, the proper support. And we are not doing that. Matter of fact, we're funding our demise. We're literally pouring so much money into the system that we keep complaining about that it's absolutely ridiculous, but we continue to do it. At asking people to support what we do. And crickets. But you can complain about everything. Look. Um, I could talk about this for God knows how long I've been doing this work for a while we've got work to do find a place to engage become a part of the solution find the programs that are actually functional that have actually put in work that actually need help and support them this is the future of our people and you don't realize it but the black race is being supplanted and replaced and we don't have a solution for it because we're not prepared we're partying we're turning up we're busy proving we've arrived when we haven't we're buying into the illusion, the illusion that we've made it and we haven't. So here's my challenge. Support the work of the people who are doing work until you have your work. And people will then support you. It's a, it's a cycle thing. You've got to get going. We are in last place for a reason. We're not in last place because we're stupid. We're not in last place because we are lazy people. We have been historically the hardest working people in this country. They'll tell us that we haven't been. They don't look at the history of what's going on. Without us, this country could not have been built. Without us, this country does not make the cataclysmic, catac cataclysmic leap into world power stardom within the short period of time that it's been a country without our labor for free. The rapid move of, of industrialization came on the backs of our ancestors and we have nothing to show for it. And we keep getting ramrodded and bamboozled and misled many times by other people who look like us that go get in these positions and are put there as buffers to guide us along and keep giving us hope about something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. We are working on it. We're doing a study on it. We're You don't got to do no damn study to tell me you owe me for the money that my people worked for and never got. You don't have to do a study for that. You need to, to run us our money. In the meantime, we need to be taking care of business. We need to stop funding our own demise. We need to get behind programs that actually have some form of validity. I've been telling you all along, if you want to deal with the violence in the community, proper racial socialization. Dr. Howard Stevenson started it. Dr. Joy DeGruy picked it up and I yanked it and I took it and I've been running with it ever since. I'm trying to get you to understand that you reduce the proclivity for violence when you properly socialize a young black male. You increase their chance of becoming pro-social, engaged, and properly trained to earn a living wage that will allow them to support a wife and children. You also reduce the chance of them becoming criminalized and ending up in prison. All of this through proper social 
socialization, a rite of passage initiative that teaches them who they are and escorts them from boyhood to manhood. And we will not get behind it to save our freaking lives. This should be a national universal language, manhood. You should understand when you say black manhood exactly what's meant. We don't. Everybody's defining manhood based on how they feel about it. Their own personal experience. There's no universal understanding of what a man does. Everybody's got their own diet. If he, that's a bunch of clowns running around here believing that they pay the bills. That makes them a man. No, that makes you financially capable. That's a portion of being a man. It doesn't make you a man. How are you protecting not just your family, but the community? How are you elevating those in your periphery? Are you elevating the people in your house or are you lording over them? Are you using your financial capability to manipulate women? And my sisters, there's a bunch of things that's going on on that side over there, too. My point is we're in last place, and it's a reason for it. And sitting around, keep doing the same thing that got us there will never get us out. Look, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to get out of here because I could literally go in on this all day. But when you've got people who are willing to invest their life, their creativity, their brilliance, their aptitude to do something that changes the things around you don't look at them and take them for granted we've done that far too often and we are losing because of it find some if if the person isn't me i'm good with that i have no ego i don't i don't need anybody to like me i don't need anybody to tell me i'm who i am i know who i am but you got to find somebody you believe in. You got to find somebody that you say this person is committed. This person is consistent. This person goes the distance. This person has been at it this long and I've never seen them waver. You need to find that person. You need to get behind them. Now is the time. There's absolutely no room for anything less. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I still have a lot to do today, but uh, I'm going to get this up uh, somewhere late afternoon. But I just needed to share that with you, and I hope that you listen to me. Look, if you look inside of the description box of where you're watching this video, there are going to be several ways that you can give, whether it's through our own processing uh, account or if it's through the GoFundMe account, which I really don't like because they take so much for processing, or if it's through Cash App. The organization has a Cash App account. But we need your support. We're in the middle right now of an 18-month uh, research program on mental health and uh, severe psychosis with black adult men and how that's impacting the home, how that's impacting the community, how it's impacting incarceration and homelessness and our inability to effectively intervene because of current state policies. That's on the deck right now. This is huge because this is how we're going to rescue a bunch of our men who have the capacity to be functional, but nobody's providing them the resources. And so they're out there, they're off their treatment, they're off their interventions, they're off their medications, and they literally have become either incarcerated, which they don't need, they need treatment, or they are just checked out homeless, or they are in some way dysfunctional and not being a contributing force, but they have the capacity. We've got to rescue that. We've also got to rescue our children and our women from the force and the negativity of the dark side of that, and we need this research. Again, look in the description box and show your love and show your support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys, thank you for giving me your time. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, 
the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be who I am.